Hello everybody, I'm James Archer from the Shirlingo Project and today I am with Mike Cortes and he is the Executive Director of Claro. So before we get started, can you kind of fill us in a little bit, just a little thing on what is Claro in the first place? What does it stand for? And well, Claro is an acronym. It stands for Colorado Latino Leadership Advocacy and Research Organization. Uh, when I was on the board for Claro, one of the things that I really liked about the organization was the idea that uh, rising tide lifts all ships, so to speak. And so um, uh, I think it's worth mentioning that Claro's focused on um, you know, the Latino community and helping the Latino community, but with the idea that this is really helping all of our communities. Yep. This is not about Latinos versus everybody else. Right. Our vision for the future, Latinos realizing their full potential throughout the state of Colorado, is going to benefit the entire state of Colorado. And I believe that too. Uh, wouldn't it be better for the entire state if our economy were able to grow uh, and take advantage of the fact that, hey, Latinos have a lot to offer Colorado. Right, and I agree with that too. Obviously, it's uh, that's one of my that's my passion is uh, this idea that we can all live and work side by side. Yep. Claro and Sherlingo are going to um, work together on this project that I uh, yeah. started uh, several months ago. Well, it's been a dream for more than a year, uh, probably uh, since the beginning of Sherlingo's existence. Was the idea that. Um, by helping in education, specifically in, in my case at the university level, how that can change their whole life, their whole path, the opportunities that that can, that can provide. And so Claro is going to be um, helping to implement that program and I'm grateful for that involvement. Well, I'm looking forward to enrolling in the program myself. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, and it's, tell me about that because you speak te hablas español, right? Eh? Sí, pero no bastante bien. <coughs> I've met so many other people mm -hmm. who, uh, like me, are uh, the children of immigrants. Mm -hmm. Who, when they were present in the room, mm -hmm. their parents would switch to English because. Uh, they really didn't want their kids to speak Spanish and even speak English with because a Spanish accent because <coughs> they were afraid of the discrimination. Discrimination and sometimes outright hatred. Um, the one thing I can, I can say to that point is that we've done the same thing in our country to the Italians yep. and the Germans and every immigrant group. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to be able to feel more comfortable and more fluent and more practiced yes. at speaking Spanish. And I know that there have been times in my life when I've been better at it, but if I don't use it, I lose it. Yes. And uh, this, this program, Share Lingo, which I think is a fantastic idea, uh, is an opportunity for me to just get in and practice as often as possible. Right. And that's only gonna help me get back on my feet when it comes to um, feeling better about uh, speaking Spanish. Great. Let me just fill in a blank that people might have about what this program is. Basically what's happening is uh, Sherlingo has reached out to university students throughout Latin America and students have signed up for uh, a beca or a scholarship opportunity through Sherlingo where fundamentally they're going to be able to do our program almost for free. There is a, a minimal um, <clears throat> fee to set up their account and maintain their account. And the university students are going to be able to take part in this program so that they can begin to really practice English uh, with us mm -hmm. here. I mean, I, I remember what it was like going to class to learn Spanish, right? How fast can we get through that so we can actually start talking to people. Okay, I am so glad you asked that because Sherlingo is not like anything you've experienced before. We, we already have a community that's developing that you could jump into right now and start uh, texting, chatting, um, connecting with these Spanish-speaking students 
And you could literally start the process today of interacting with these students. You will be interacting on several times a week if you want to. I've, right. I've wanted to do it since I was a small child. All right. One of those things I never quite got around. We're going to talk about how to practice together before we talk about how to meet people to practice together. Our desire is that you're able to spend, um, commit probably about 15 to 30 minutes a day is enough for you to be very successful doing this, this course. And I think that's a realistic uh, amount. Actually, that, that's very encouraging. I, I wasn't looking forward to going back to the grammar books. If you can hear the children in the background, we are in a school here at where Claro has its offices now, right? You will not go back to the vocabulary and grammar books. Now, for the, the students who are in college, they are probably studying vocabulary and grammar. But guess what? They can bring that to your meetings and then you can help them practice that vocabulary and grammar that they are studying and that's automatically going to rub off on you. Yeah. This process is as painless as it can get because it's all about giving and then the more you give the more you receive. So, What do you do about those people who feel that they must do everything perfectly? I won't tell you whether I'm one of those people or not, but you know, sometimes you just really hate to make mistakes, especially in public or in a conversation. That is a brilliant question, okay? Um, so there is a process and this is the best method that I have ever experienced, it certainly worked for me, to get from where you are today to the confidence that what you want to say is what you're actually saying, all right? And the process works like this. Fundamentally, if you can picture yourself in the next couple of weeks becoming actual friends, uh, maybe a mentor, all right, to some of these university students, say in Nicaragua or Guatemala or Honduras, can you picture yourself being in that kind of uh, mentor friendship relationship with them. Oh, sure. So what's going to happen is naturally that bond, um, that friendship that happens allows you to make mistakes. When you're helping somebody on the other side speak English and you see them mangle English and you're helping them with English when it's your turn to try and say something in Spanish, you don't feel that embarrassment. If you show me your mangle, I'll show you mine. Right. And I can illustrate this, all right? If I say in English, yesterday I go to the beach. <coughs> it is beautiful. You know what I meant. And you can help me correct that mm -hmm. sentence. And I can say the same thing in Spanish. Ayer voy a la playa. Es hermosa. Right? And then if I say that, they can help me say, Ayer fui a la playa. Right? I went to the beach. But my opportunity to just talk, to just say, Ayer voy a la playa. A la playa. Yesterday I go to the beach. And then there's somebody safe that can help me understand what is correct. Now I've heard what is correct. And so now when I transition to a stranger, I have the confidence to say, ayer fui a la playa. And I have the confidence that what I'm trying to say is correct. This sounds to me like the way we learn our first language at home as small children. It is very similar. Your mom, you, you know, you talk the way your mama talks, right? Yeah. And when and I got that Christian. down, I'll talk to somebody else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is, this is taking the best of both worlds. So we get, we have the ability to use logic to improve how quickly we learn the language. So believe it or not, everybody, 
adults learn a language vastly faster than children. Mm. This is true, all right? The difference is children learn without fear. Yeah. And if we can find a way to practice and improve without fear, that's what makes all the difference. And that is sheer lingo. Good. I'm looking forward to it. So what's going to happen here with our relationship with Glado? Glado is going to help us um, find uh, and offer this opportunity to English speakers who would like to be taking part in this university program. And uh, just the icing on the cake is that um, you're going to have an opportunity to do this class uh, for a very, very reduced price uh, compared to our normal rates for this membership. But even so, a large percentage, a significant percentage of any fees that you pay are going to come back to the Claro organization to help support their mission and their dreams. I'm, I'm going to do this for personal reasons because I'm just very motivated to learn Spanish something, improve my Spanish, something I've wanted to do for most of my life. Uh, but I want everybody else to do it too because it's going to benefit the organization that, uh, that I care deeply about mm -hmm. and that is uh, doing so much for folks um, in our community. Absolutely. This is about community. Well, thank you. Thank for you, this. James. Yep. So, Mike, this represents the first commission check for Colorado for the Becca program that we did for university students to bring the English and Spanish speakers together. And it is my pleasure to do that. Thank you for your support. support. Uh, we appreciate being able to work. I'm glad that you're part of the program as well. Oh,